A four-year starter hugs his coach Gary Patterson as he joins his fellow seniors walking on the field at Amon Carter Stadium in Fort Worth for the final time as a TCU Horn Frog. So much at stake for this program as today they face a very reborn San Diego State program in college football on versus. TCU, two wins away from a second consecutive undefeated regular season and of course a Mountain West championship. But that's a title that San Diego State remarkably still has within its grasp. And we welcome you to College Football on Versus along with Kelly Stopper, Ted Robinson, Lindsey Soto will join us. What did TCU's win, the legitimacy it stamped their program with? Andy Dalton made the cover, a three-headed cover of this week's Sports Illustrated. It's big for this program. You feel it here, Kelly, how excited oh, yeah. everybody is. But the one thing they still have to do is finish. Yeah, you question whether they can come back after that emotional win a week ago. Senior day here today, that's the intangible. Can they come out and have one more dominating performance? 26 seniors playing their, a huge senior class playing their final game today, but the leader, the, the name is Andy Dalton. He's done so much here at TCU. He's going to own so many records, but that's the biggest thing, Kelly. He's won. I absolutely. They were good a year ago. Andy Dalton is even better than that, but a quarterback and a head coach is measured by how many games do you win. You can't get any better than Andy Dalton has been here at TCU. Well, TCU knows their hurdle today is a stern one. Brady Hoke has done an amazing job in rebirthing football at San Diego State. They can always throw it, but this year they can run it. Yeah, and that's the big difference. It's about toughness that Brady Hulk wanted to instill in this team, but it's this guy right here, the true freshman in Hillman. He does a great job. He's very shifty. He's incredibly patient for a young runner, and if you miss tackles, you got to tackle this guy's legs. If you don't, he will take it to the house, and you can see what he's doing this year. 116 yards rushing per game. He leads the FBS in freshman, and he's the first, the third freshman actually to go over a thousand yards. He's the difference in this Aztec offense this season. Can Hillman succeed running against the nation's best defense here at TCU as the Horn Frogs take the field? The final game as it stands at Amon Carter Stadium before a renovation. The man that's been the architect of this amazing decade of football at TCU is Gary Patterson. He's with Lindsey Soto. Coach, the last time that you'll take the field in this stadium as is, how much is that on the mind of your team? Right now, just San Diego State. Our kids understand all that there's a game. You know, we'll let everybody else enjoy this. Obviously, we're very proud of everybody that's played here, but uh, today it's about getting against win 11. Will you have Ed Wesley available? Uh, probably won't start the game, maybe play a little bit. You know, if you're going to win a championship, you got to win with everybody else. So here we go. Good luck, Coach. Yes. All right, Lindsey, Gary Patterson did show uh, his team last night a video that played off this great historic stadium and a lot of the highlights of it. There's Brady Hoke in his second year at San Diego State. Best start in 15 years matches the best start in 33 for San Diego State. And it's an astounding, as you see, yeah. running in here in two years. Two and ten team. And then order number one was to instill toughness into this program. He needs to see it on the offensive and defensive lines of scrimmage. If they can compete there today, they have an opportunity. All right, TCU is going to get the ball first. Greg McCoy and Jeremy Curley are deep. And Curley, one of the best in the nation, running back the kicks in the purple for TCU. Tried to get and turn the corner, pushed out near the 25-yard line as TCU today wears jerseys that harken back to the LT era purple jerseys with white pants. 26 TCU seniors. A four-year starter, Andy Dalton, with those astonishing numbers. The great completion percentage. Just five interceptions. Only sacked five times. And immediately to the shotgun as TCU starts from the 26-yard line. And Ed Wesley is on the field for the first snap. Fake to Wesley. Pitch. And Curley is swung out of bounds on a nice defensive stand by Jose Perez, the best of the defensive backs on the San Diego State team. As we look at the O-line, a huge O-line, 360-pound left tackle Marcus Cannon. And Ed Wesley, and of course, they've got a trio deep 
wide receivers. 15 different Horned Frogs have scored a touchdown this year. Wesley getting this a uh, little bit of a surprise start killer. Really, he is, and he's the most complete back, so they do miss something when he's not in there. Tucker, who will play a lot today, is more of a thumper type of running back. You see San Diego State, those three down linemen spread wide. Pressure, and there's a rarity as Dalton is dropped by Miles Burris, his eighth sack of the year. And this is what Rocky Long's defense is all about. The 3-3-5, they're typically bringing a fifth, sometimes a sixth player, and you can see Burris just getting off and around the edge. But that's what TCU is going to have to guard against today, those negative plays that Rocky Long's 3-3-5 defense have to have to live on. Well, a great speed rush there, and you saw that was Marcus Cannon, a 360-pounder who's a very highly regarded a tackle. And Miles Burris just... Speed rushed around him for a 12-yard sack, a long third for Dalton. And a throw to Jimmy Young, and he's right at the stick. That was the original spot, well short of the first down, as the senior Young is dropped by Leon McFadden of San Diego State. And that is a rarity, a three and out for the TCU offense. Yeah, and it's a great start if you're an Aztec fan, and that's what Rocky Long talked about is the way they have to get off the field is create negative yardage type of plays early in this game and if they can do that build some momentum they have an opportunity Anson Kelton punts Larry Parker oh and he got pounded a smack right there by Traveris Battle a freshman corner on the punt cover <laughs> a huge hit and this is typically Ted where TCU has a huge advantage but you can see the big hit right there but the the order of the day is they get a three and out. San Diego State starts with great field position on their first possession. Well, this is the kind of start that any team hoping to pull off an upset needs is Ryan Lindley, a three-year starter himself and a junior. Coming off a shaky game last Saturday, despite the Aztecs winning at home against Colorado State. And Hillman gets that first inside try, running it right at the heart of the TCU defense to gain four as we... Look at the San Diego State offense. Tommy Dreheim at the left tackle. Manly talk about having made a tremendous run here in advantage Injury this year. Up. Hillman and Sullivan often operate as a two-back set. Sampson and Brown are a veteran pair. Big, both of them big wide receivers. And a veteran for TCU. His 37th consecutive start, but on the first play, T.J. Johnson Sr. is, is down. Yeah, and that could be a huge development because Gary Patterson's defense is predicated on T.J. Johnson really being one of two safeties that are kind of quarterbacks on that back end. And T.J. Johnson is that guy who thinks a lot like his head coach, gives him a lot of flexibility in terms of making adjustments on the fly. Well, Gary Patterson, the head coach, is, he still runs the defense here, and it is the best in the nation across the board. DeMarco Sampson comes down and, and kind of cracks back on T.J. Johnson. Split back, second and six. Going to run a reverse, and then a pitch back. And Lindley looking for the home run ball. And Vincent Brown has it. Vincent Brown is inside the one for San Diego State. Trickery and 49 yards for the big play against the TCUD. The offensive coordinator, Al Borges, for San Diego State told us they have to throw some bombs early in this game, and some of those bombs have to hit their mark. And you can see right there the double reverse, pitch back to Lindley, and then he gets it downfield to their big play speed guy, Vincent Brown. Good job of watching it in your hands at the end. The Aztecs look for the finish here. From the eye, it's Sullivan over the top, and San Diego State strikes quickly to silence the early enthusiasm in Fort Worth. Wow, and you couldn't ask for a better start, Ted. The defense gets a three and out, and then the offense gets a huge play and scores early on this defense of the Horned Frogs that simply don't give up a lot on the entire season. Nobody has thrown for 200 yards against TCU this year. Just think about that in today's yeah. era of football, right? Nobody has thrown for 200. As Abel Perez kicks through the extra point for San Diego State, they just hit 49 on one big play that gets Brady Hoke's Aztecs off to a lead. TCU has only trailed for 9 minutes and 19 seconds all year. They're behind early today. 
San Diego State has silenced, at least early, a crowd that came to party today. Oh, no kidding. About 600 alum from this football program coming here today, but Brady Holt's team gets off to really the storybook start. A three and out defensively, get Andy Dalton off the field, and then a big play against this Horn Frog defense that simply hasn't given up much the entire year. They had an entire array of family members on the field before the game for the 26 seniors. A ton of folks coming here to celebrate the final day in this stadium as it exists. Fireworks afterwards, and San Diego State trying to spoil it all. As Perez, with a very strong leg, drives that in for the touchback. As we'll look at the Toyota quality drive summary, which was really one play. It all started with a good field position, but one big play, Kelly. Yeah, the double reverse pass, and the safety, Beloy gets out of position, and then you can see Jason Teague chases Brown down the field, and then Sullivan cashes it in. But the big play against this Horn Frog defense is news in itself. Of course, it all started with a three and out created by the San Diego State defense with a sack being the instrumental play as the flags come down on the snap. Now, remember what we referenced early today, Kelly. Gary Patterson. False start. Offense, number 70. Five-yard penalty. First down. Talk to us yesterday about last year after yeah. they won the emotional game with Utah here. He said, we didn't play well in our last two games. They won them both. But we didn't play well, and it carried into their bowl game with Boise. You're exactly right, and I think they just weren't sharp mentally. They've made mistakes against Wyoming and New Mexico to end the year, and he wants to prevent that here today. It looks like they're suffering from that same condition. And the San Diego State defense ready there. It's Matthew Tucker, the second runner for TCU, for a team that runs the ball extremely well, and he's stopped for no gain there. As you see the San Diego State, this is the Rocky Long 3-3-5 defense, and they're missing their middle backer today, Marcus Yarbrough. And really, it's this group right here, Andrew Preston in the secondary in particular, is that Aztec back gives this defense a lot of flexibility. Also missing uh, B.J. Williams. They're missing two stalwarts, frontline players off the Aztec defense today. Dalton spreading the field, empty backfield. Four rush, quick throw. Boy, that went through several hands and dangerously close to a pick. TCU is just trying to make up some yardage, getting third and manageable. Very lucky that that ball wasn't picked off. Trying to go to number six, Bart Johnson in the corner actually got underneath that route. Andy Dalton looks a little shaky to begin with as well. Usually he makes great decisions. That was not a very good decision. Matt Burry getting a shot to play up front here for San Diego State. Had that best shot at the pick. Third and 15. Lobbing it up for Boyce. And that was through the hands of Jose Perez. Closest man to it. And the TCU Horn Frog start with consecutive three and outs. What Rocky Long does defensively in that 3-3-5, it's very unorthodox, and it takes a while to kind of understand what it is you're seeing and make better decisions. Creates a lot of negative plays, makes offenses look really bad early, but I would think TCU at that veteran group can stick with this and try to figure out some of the, get some answers against this defense. Boy, not a good punt. A little help with the bounce. Going to get about a 10 extra yard bounce but Kelton did not hit that well and San Diego State will once again have very good field position. There's TCU's how little they trail. How yeah. dominant I mean this is a team that's been thoroughly dominant average allowing 8.5 points a game. Yeah TCU isn't used to being behind but also remember San Diego State is coming here to win. Brady Hope was talking about we still control our own destiny in this conference. This team believes they can win here today. Lindley's pass is incomplete on first down. T.J. Johnson back on the field for TCU after being knocked out in the first possession. What you're going to see out of San Diego State early is they want to get kind of a not only a running game presence but a downhill running game. Be more physical with this TCU front six in this 4-2-5 scheme of Gary Patterson. Second down. 
DeMarco Sampson slides. Ronnie Hillman. And Hillman slanting, just kind of slashing to the outside, crosses midfield and gets five. It'll be third and five, Lindsey Soto. Guys, whatever it was with TJ Johnson, it clearly was not that serious. They didn't even take him to the table. He never took off his helmet. He did spend the whole offensive series stretching out his upper body, mostly his left side. That's great news if you're a Horn Frog fan because he's the captain, the, really the quarterback on that back end that has to get a lot of guys lined up properly. Wayne Daniels lined up flanked way right. The pass rusher passes off the hands of Vincent Brown incomplete. Same man that uh, was chasing him down in the long play, Jason Teague on the cover. Watching the Wayne Daniels there lined up way out on the right to see if he's going to try to put some pressure on. And Teague is man-to-man -man on Brown up at the top, and that's what Lindley was going to, is just trying to find the guy that's one-on-one. -on -one. Brown simply running a slant, and that ball was just a little too hot and a little too high. Well, Jeremy Curley averages 13 yards a punt return for TCU. He's in the top 15 in the nation, both kick and punt runbacks. Mahovic's punt and a fair catch. Curley takes it inside the 10. So field position belonging to San Diego State the first five minutes of this game. And the Aztecs up 7-0 in Fort Worth. College football on versus presented by Windows 7. Brady Hoke and his Aztecs on offense on their first big play. They went right at a very experienced part of the TCU defense. What they want to do is they call it canceling the safeties. There's Alex Ibiloy right there. The play action pass is designed to get him to step up and create a one-on-one -on -one situation behind him. Right there, you can see Vincent Brown going deep. He's now has Jason Teague in his hip pocket. Canceling the safeties is the terminology. TCU safeties are very aggressive. Get him to run support and throw the ball over the top. All right, first down from the TCOA. Ball on the ground. San Diego State has it. I believe it. Well, or did they... Oh, wow, it looked like the Aztecs had fallen on the ball, but no. Wow. It Demetrius looked like, Barksdale yeah. looked like he fell right on the fumble by Wayman James. Yeah, it was hard to believe that Barksdale did not end up with it, but this is just careless ball handling. You can see right there, it's a read option, and the running back did not know that Andy Dalton was going to pull that ball out. There was a little miscommunication between James, who is the red shirt freshman, remember, Wesley hasn't been in the game much, and so the youngster was in there in a little miscommunication. Loss of two, but absolute miracle somehow that James came out with that ball and not Barksdale. Dalton throws, incomplete intended for Jimmy Young. Young arguing that McFadden's cover was too aggressive. The ball looked like it may have sailed past Young by the time McFadden got him. It was very close, but I think McFadden did a nice job of closing and breaking on that ball, getting Young to the ground right at the very end. That ball's already by him. I think that's a good call. But right yeah, now, like what's, a, a good no call. what's really interesting is, yeah, good no call, exactly right. As interesting as I think San Diego State is very comfortable with their matchups outside in the one-on-one -on -one situations, and they're actually winning those yes. matchups currently. And they're playing up close. You, you see the way they're pressing. Oh, a sack! Ball on the ground again. Touchdown, San Diego State. A sack of Dalton in the end zone. Rob Andrews sacked him. Blindside. You talk about a nightmare start for the number three team in the country. Andrews is the extra man coming off the top right there. That's all about Rocky Long disguising the coverage. What his design is to, to bring one guy that they cannot block, and you can see obviously right there, Rob Andrews is that one guy. A Previous lot of play. blitz schemes. On review. A lot of blitz schemes, Ted, is about creating one-on-one -on -one situations, not for Rocky Long. He wants to create a free guy that is completely unblocked, and Andrews was that guy on that play. Jerome Long, defensive lineman, recovered after Rob Andrews sack fumbled the ball. Now the play has been stopped from the booth for review. For what reason? Uh, we'll see if you can figure this yeah, out. Yeah, the ball is clearly no out. No clue. 
I don't know if it's just a matter of who possesses and the ball, but let me tell you something. What do you think right now is going through San Diego State's mind on their sideline when they see a yeah. touchdown that is being reviewed? Yeah, there's a been, very sensitive subject absolutely. around the Aztecs. You know, this is a team that could easily be 9-0 and coming into this game. They lost two games with questionable calls. One was actually a no call, a block in the back against Missouri, and the other one was actually a blatant missed call in a, a replay situation against a... Well, that's the one that really stings. Uh, against BYU. A replay situation that caused a, a change in protocol for the Mountain West Conference. We'll explain that when we After have a chance. The review, the ruling on the field has been confirmed. Touchdown, San Diego State. No idea why they even felt the need to look at that, but the end result is what San Diego State deserved. The touchdown and a shocking start in Fort Worth. And this is, talking to Gary Patterson the last couple of days, this is exactly what he feared. The emotional win a week ago, senior day here today, the closing out of the Eamon G. Carter Stadium, all of those things, how does his team respond? Not very well so far. TCU had been sacked five times all year. Two sacks early by San Diego State, and the Aztecs up 14-0. Brady Hoke, who has engineered a remarkable turnaround in just two years, looking for a signature win for his program. We are way ahead of where we were probably year two of Ball State. And in saying that, I think uh, uh, the way our players have understood the expectations that we have, you know, and um, how they go to class and how they represent themselves in the community and how they work in the weight room, how they work in the off-season program, and how they compete every day. Now that was Brady Hope talking this summer. Yeah. Can you imagine what he would say now? Oh, absolutely. After this seven and two, four and one, and the two losses being by six points. Yeah, highly questionable. Well, I think one of the, the most improved teams, certainly in the Mountain West Conference, I think in all the country, but incredibly well coached. El Borges. A lot of experience handling the offense. Rocky Long, a ton of experience handling the defense. And then the toughness that their head coach brings. Perez kicks it. And Jeremy Curley once again denied the chance to run it back. Of course, here, this game takes importance. But they're also watching one eye on the Auburn-Georgia game. So is Kevin Frazier in our studio. That, Kevin, of course, the other big story, the biggest story of the last 48 hours, Cameron Newton, he is playing. He is starting for Auburn today. Yeah, and with all of that smoke going around that program, you wondered when it would catch up with the young men mentally. It may be there today. Well, this is not a spot that Andy Dalton and the Horn Frogs have been in in recent years, and I say plural, as the first down pass goes to Jeremy Curley for five yards. I mean, when you only give up yeah. eight and a half a game, that's <laughs> obvious. And uh, their well, one loss last year was in the bowl game to Boise by a touchdown in the fourth quarter. And remember the 26 seniors that TCU has. So they have a ton of experience, and it's going to take experience right now to dig TCU out of this hole. Wesley back on the field. They fake to him. Go to Curley again. Two passes to Curley. And one thing, Kelly, I wanted to get to you about is how San Diego State defense is, because last week you saw TCU just chew up Utah with the very play they've run twice here. And, and can San Diego State stop that? Yeah, we've, we've actually seen it a little bit already. San Diego State is pressing the line of scrimmage to try to take away that type of stuff, the screen game, the quick passing game. TCU wants to get the ball to Jeremy Curley, 85. He's their touch guy. You have to get him going early in this game. Two of those getting a first down. Now they run it, Tucker middle, and that's out to the 37-yard line with a flag down. But Tucker, remember, you'd almost say he's the plow horse back. He only averages four and a half a game for TCU. Marvell July is our referee. Illegal motion on the offense, number 48. Five yards from the previous spot, first down. 
course, they have three running backs plus the quarterback, Dalton, that all average over six yards a carry. And Luke Sheevers was the fullback in that time. He's kind of a hybrid fullback, tight end type of guy that brings a more physical presence in that run game. But once again, you can see the pre-snap penalties and the errors that you don't see a lot of times out of TCU. You're seeing them here today early in this game. Sky Dawson, a track star, sprints late onto the field there. He's in the slot right. Dalton changing, and now Dalton calling timeout. And again, that's unusual to see TCU in some sense of disarray, and Dalton forced to take a timeout. TCU. Gary Patterson's reaction. In about three weeks' time, they're going to knock down that entire side of the stadium you see. By next season, they'll have rebuilt most of a new side, part of the incredible growth of TCU football. But right now, there are dreams for 2010. They're going to face an uphill climb on this Saturday. 14-0, San Diego State. First and 15, TCU. Dalton quick underneath. Bart Johnson, nice duck. And Bart Johnson, one of the great measures of a receiver, yards after catch. He made a fabulous duck under Brandon Davis to get close to a first down. 14 yards. And Andy Dalton getting the ball out quickly, accurately. It's what gives Bart Johnson room to run afterwards. And, Ted, you're exactly right. San Diego State is going to take some chances defensively. And there is big plays there waiting to happen if TCU can take advantage of it. 32nd there you see now for Bart Johnson, 32 in a row as the handoff goes to Tucker. And Tucker finds his way to the 45-yard line and a TCU first down before Andrew Preston makes the tackle. With TCU's offense and Andy Dalton in his fourth year of starting, they're going up tempo right now to try to make the Aztecs identify their look just a little bit quicker. James is the running back, four receivers to each side. Saw Dalton do this very well in Utah last week. A lot of audibles, a lot of changes at the line. Dalton holding, holding, and then overthrowing. And there's a case where Boyce, the receiver, Josh Boyce, who had the big 93-yarder last week at Utah, but Larry Parker of San Diego State Kelly right up press cover on the line. Yeah, and we talked about that earlier, and I think that's what San Diego State is going to do is try to press coverage, and even though they had zone behind it, they're trying to get press coverage on the line of scrimmage, not letting TCU's wideouts get down the field in a hurry. Second down, Dalton keeps it. Nice play. Dalton gets eight. Preston again on the stop, and one of Dalton's gifts. He's run for 418 yards this year. Yeah, he's not a real pretty runner, but what he does in the running game is makes great decisions. The quarterback zone read, he gets up inside, and Andy Dalton's going to have to make some plays here today with his feet. Third and two. Again, TCU empties. Five wide. Nice catch. Boy, that's... That's the catch that gets you some notice. All hands by Bart Johnson. Bart jo Johnson is the kind of guy that's just dependable. He's always in the right place at the right time. Great routes and great hands. So first down inside the San Diego State 45. Well, Dalton looked like he took that a little bit on the run. And got it out quickly, but San Diego State defense is nicely there. Khalid Stevens dropping Wayman James. San Diego State making massive substitutions. They play 22 That's, to 23 guys on yeah. the defensive side. Yeah, Rocky Long was very clear, making sure we understood that. Yeah, yeah he a lot of people in and out. A lot of redshirt freshmen and sophomores. Still a lot of learning taking place for the Aztecs. Dalton now sees the uh, defense changes on second and eight. Oh. Been getting right up on Boyce again at the bottom, underneath Johnson. Nice cut back to the middle of the field, and then Brandon Davis puts the clamp on him. 
A good tackle by Davis to stop uh, Johnson a yard short of the first. Gain of seven. And this is what TC likes to do, TCU, is when you get press coverage outside, they really try to exploit the inside with Bart Johnson. We've already seen a couple of catches, but also look for Jeremy Curley to play a bigger role here today in this game. Right here and right here. So third and one. James dropped in the backfield. Burris, who had a huge sack in the first drive. Now going to force TCU into a fourth down. Loss of three. One thing the Aztec defense does is they get penetration. You can see Burris really is just unblocked. Not a very good job of regulating or managing the line of scrimmage in the run game by any Dalton on that play. So fourth and four, TCU goes. Spread the field again. This is Bart Johnson right here. This is the matchup they've liked so far. Dalton gets it off. Outside. Curley sets down the sideline. Touchdown. 38 yards as Curley did a magnificent job of staying inbounds and tight roping the sideline. I think there are a lot of Horned Frog fans right now taking a deep breath. That looks like more of what they expected to see here today. It's uncanny. Eight. When TCU needs a play, Curley is their guy. He's done that over and over this year. 20th touchdown pass for Dalton. The eighth to Curley. Ross Evans point. Well, that drive started with two consecutive first down passes. As you said, Kelly, they said, get the ball to Curley. Yeah, and he's the middle guy at the top right there. He goes outside. Both inside guys running outside routes. Curley is the guy that you build touches for because not only does he run good routes, but he's a playmaker once he has the ball in his hands. And how impressive. Not easy to tackle. He's listed at 5'10". He sure plays bigger than that. Yeah, and he's, he's their target guy, the change of direction. But he's an inside receiver, so he either is on linebackers or on safeties, and that's a mismatch no matter who's covering him. So TCU able to answer. One drive down the field for a score. Devon Brown. And Brandon Davis back to return the kick for San Diego State. Walking around outside the stadium today, you heard a lot of people saying, I need tickets. It's a nice thing to hear. At TCU, is that kick? Oh, look at that. How about living right? That ball was going out of bounds to give it at the 40-yard line, and it just curls at the last second. I wonder if that's a sign of where the momentum is going in this game right now. Or do you know the break on the field? Did he understand how that ball was going to play? <laughs> Look at that ball stay in and go for the touchback. Lindsey Soto. Ted, this Horn Frog defense is number one in the nation in total D scoring D and pass D. And after what Kelly and I saw last night, that is no surprise. Every Friday night before a game, Gary Patterson conducts what he calls a video test for the defense, has a video projector, a dark room, and the rapt attention of his pupils. I'll tell you more after the play. Lindley too high for tight end Bryce Quigley incomplete, Lindsay. So what he does, he flashes a frozen SDSU play formation on the screen and listens as the whole room calls out the defense. They uh, go through gap assignments, route recognitions, tendencies. If they speak softly, they have to start over because that means they're not confident. I feel like I know football fairly well, and I was completely lost. This is a seriously complicated defense, and Gary Patterson is a savant. It is crazy how fast his mind works, guys. Lindley now seeing a threatened blitz. Pops up on second and ten. Sullivan. Wrapped up and stopped. Almost no gain. DJ Yendry leading the way inside along with Ross Forrest. Now last week, Corey Grant plays tackle for TCU. And he said, we were calling out their plays, the Utah plays. 
we knew what they were going to run. He said, that was cool. I've never had that yeah. kind of coaching in my life. Incredibly well prepared. TCU's defense is coached very much like an NFL defense. It's about formation, recognition. What does the team run from this formation? Very well coached. Not a lot of mistakes made by this defense. Third down from the gun. And Lindley's pass incomplete. A lot of purple shirts surrounding DeMarco Sampson. And San Diego State, three and out. And San Diego State wanting to go play action pass on first down. And it's kind of a double-edged sword because when you don't complete it, now you're behind in the sticks to a defense that wants to get you in predictable passing situations because they get great pressure and they cover extremely well on the back end. Now this is where Curley really gets you. You can see he's... You have to want to run punts. Ooh, that one came close to being blocked. And Curley got that look in his eye. He wants a shot here. He's got a shot. The punter saves six. 45-yard run back by Curley. Flag down, but the flag is down near the end of the run back. And it was late enough to where I think it's after the play anyway. But once again, when TCU wants or needs a play, give it to 85. Throw it to him, hand it to him, or let him catch a punt. You saw that too, Kelly. When you, you, you Running back punts is a desire thing, right? Isn't oh, it? absolutely. And you could see that in Curley's eyes. After the play, personal foul. Receiving team, number 18, 15 yards, first down. A little exuberance from Traveris Battle, I assume. We didn't see it, but, but I mean, you could tell the way Curley's body language, I want to make a play here. Yeah, and when you have a guy that wants to make a play, you, what you get is better blocking from the other 10 guys on the field. And Curley has a great sense of where the softness is, how to get to it, and then he has that change of direction and speed to just gash the coverage. Still no, uh, didn't really see the penalty, but it cost TCU 15. And I'll start from the San Diego State 40. So Wayman, or excuse me, that's Ed Wesley. So yeah. Ed Wesley playing a a little more than we would have envisioned, but stopped up there Ernie Lawson from San Diego State. And we talked about Ed Wesley's right ankle is certainly a question mark. We can see him come out of the game now, but he's their dependable guy. He's their probably their best all-around guy, but dependable in terms of hanging on to the ball, running to the softness, and they're going to miss him if he he's limited today, which it appears that he is. So second and ten, split backs alongside. As Dalton fires a long out. It's got some arm on that throw, and Josh Boyce makes the catch for a first down. Boyce matched up on number two, Leon McFadden, and that's a mismatch if, if you're the Aztecs, and that's exactly where the veteran quarterback Dalton is going to look. It was called a one-free coverage, a high safety, man-to-man -man everywhere else. I think TCU likes that matchup outside. 12 yards, first down. And Dalton starting to find his rhythm. But San Diego State's making it tough to run. Lawson again wraps up Wayman James. You talked about the rhythm of TCU, and I think that's what TCU's offense is all about because Andy Dalton can go at whatever speed they need to. They're going a little bit more quickly right now up to the up to the huddle but it's all about rhythm in passing game and in the running game that curly slot left in the wide side of the field single cover marcus andrews oh and there's a bullet right there and a drop by jimmy young So it'll be third and ten. Well, Curley was inside, and Jimmy Young just runs a hook route outside. Jimmy Young just needs to catch this football. Curley's just going to come outside, and you're going to get Young running the route right there against the two-shell coverage. You have a high safety, actually two high safeties. Good route, good throw. Just need to look it into your hands. 
So TCU now faces third and 10. Dalton goes high for Young. Flag very late. Larry Parker, the cover. The flag came from the opposite side of the field. Pass interference. Defense. Wow. Into the end. Spot foul. Automatic first down. Well, Brady Hope doesn't like the fact that it was called late and called from the official on the opposite side of the field. Wow, I don't I know would, about uh, that. I would, uh, I would understand Brady Hope's reaction. I think pretty decent coverage by Larry Parker on Jimmy Young, and when the yes. official on the opposite side has to throw the hanky, I don't know about that. First down, so the Horn Frog drive stays alive at the San Diego State 15. Blitz coming, it's picked up. Fade route, touchdown. Beautifully thrown ball to Logan Brock. It's a great job of TCU knowing their opponent. Man-to-man -man coverage in the red zone. Get the tight end, Logan Brock, their best route running from that position, one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker. Good things are going to happen. Oh, and the extra point is no good. Ross Evans bangs it off the upright. His miss keeps San Diego State in front by a point. Logan Brock is the best route runner. You can see him releasing to the left of the screen. There was trips in a stacked position to the right. And so right now the veteran quarterback, Andy Dalton, knows he has one-on-one. -on -one. Hold the safety in the middle of the field and just throw a ball that your guys can get to. As a quarterback, you love Absolutely. it when you have the right play call against the right defense. And there aren't many defenses that this young man hasn't seen. And, and Kelly, I would say that watching TCU again last week, and obviously an, an extremely great performance, but that was so impressive. How many times they recognized yeah. who was in man and could take advantage of them. Oh, absolutely. And I think when you have a Andy Dalton that is starting for his fourth season, you just have seen it all and you're very confident in him. This will be Davis running it back for San Diego State. Oh, and he got caught by the shirt, and maybe not cleanly as the flag comes down, I believe, on that tackle by Brock. This Logan might, Brock's brother, that's what we're going to call him. <laughs> this might be a horse collar situation. I don't think he had his face mask. It looked like he just had the jersey. There's no foul on the play. Yep. First down, San Diego State. You can see that's a great, there's a great view of it. All right, we'll come back to that in a second. Let's go to Kevin Frazier for a game break. Yes. Here. All right, Kevin, here it is 14-13. San Diego State needing the some offense now, Ronnie Hillman wrapped up and dropped by Alex Abiloe. Not a uh, not a good day for Utah. Rebounding from its uh, drubbing at home by the Horn Frogs last week. Utah is getting pounded today at Notre Dame, 28 to three. Very surprising. We had Utah, Utah favored. Yeah, yeah, and we had them early in the year, and I, I really believe they're the real deal, but absolutely a hangover from the beating they took a week ago. Well, San Diego State stunned the TCU crowd today. A big offensive play on a pass to Vincent Brown. A defensive score, but TCU rebounded as Dalton finds his man, Jeremy Curley, and then a nearly tight touchdown to Logan Brock. Can Chow, which uh, is playing a fair and a new quarterback, can they challenge? They are a very good home team. It'll be a great game to watch. Following this... 
San Diego State TCU showdown as that play does not get off cleanly for the Aztecs. False start. Offense number 85. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. Tight end DJ Shields of San Diego State. And this is where Ryan Lindley has to make some very good decisions. When they get behind in the sticks in the down and distance right now, being second and 16, very good coverage seen by TCU. Lindley needs to stay out of trouble right here. Only two wide outs in the game, two backs. Lindley throws it out for Sampson, who makes a sliding catch, but he's short of a first. Is covered by a Beloy, and it gives them a... A much more manageable third down. It'll be third down and four coming up after a nine-yard game. Lindsey Soto. Guys, there's an interesting dynamic in play in today's game in that San Diego State actually stands to lose money if they win the game. Specifically, they'll be out about $300,000, which is how much each Mountain West school would make if TCU made it to a BCS Bowl game, which they almost certainly would not if they lost this game. A shotgun for San Diego State on third and four. And Lindley's over the middle, dropped by Vincent Brown. Covered by, or pressure rather, by Wayne Daniels. That's the, the man who comes the closest to filling the shoes of Jerry Hughes here. Yeah, Daniels is the instant pressure guy, but Carter right there, Tank Carter, 43. You can see him trying to wall off. Number 80, Vincent Brown, the linebacker just looking up the inside breaking receiver and just not letting him cross his face. Great coverage by Tank Carter. All right, Curley just set up one TCU touchdown with a big time punt return. Well, this time the Aztecs cover well. Nice job on the San Diego State. Punt cover team to drop Curly after a very short run back. All right, a battle of the running backs, our Pizza Hut favorite matchup. Yeah, and Ed Wesley, we've talked about being banged up, but TCU wants to run the football, and and with Ronnie Hillman, San Diego State has to run the football in order to move it against this TCU defense here today. He's gotten off to a slow start thus far. TCU two straight drives down for touchdowns. The second one a short field again after the big punt return. Now they go back to the ground with James. James more of that squat power runner, 5'8", 203. Rob Andrews on the tackle for San Diego State. The running backs here are young on a senior yeah. laden team. Yeah. The running backs are young. James is a second year player in the program. Wesley and Tucker, both sophomores. And James does have some of that explosiveness that Wesley has. Tucker's more of the softener guy. He comes in and just pounds the opposition. Option pitch, and Tucker got some field to run. And Tucker's driven out of bounds by Preston of San Diego State, but not before he crosses midfield. TCU likes this play, kind of the just the quick option, getting to the perimeter, Optioning off the first force guy that Andy Dalton sees and pitching it to Matthew Tucker is just one of their staples, and Andy Dalton makes very good decisions in the TCU run game. All right, we got a San Diego State defender move, and then the TCU lineman responds. Let's see how they interpret this. Defense, all sides, number 93, five-yard penalty, first down. So Larry Gibbs is flagged for making the first move. And Dooley, the left guard, responded. So here's TCU again trying to keep this tempo going. Now this place in the field, you really have to be alert for that matchup. One-on-one -on -one down. Andy Dalton's reading this guy to see if he's going to give help over the top. It was Antoine Hicks, the receiver for TCU. At the very bottom, Dalton's looking left. There's a long out, and it's caught for a first down. Jimmy Young on the catch for TCU. 
Jimmy Young really hasn't been used a ton because of the emergence of Josh Boyce, number 82. But remember, Jimmy Young is a big play guy. He's an outside guy, a lot of speed, a lot of experience, runs good routes. Andy Dalton is liking that matchup so far here today. A gorgeous fall afternoon. Cloudless sky, bright sunshine, temperature in about the low 60s here. A fabulous football Saturday as James is pursued well. And uh, San Diego State wraps him up. It's uh, like the best no game. Josh Wade leading the surge. And, Ted, that's a, a good sign for San Diego State. If, if TCU's running game is going more laterally than it is downhill, the Aztecs are doing a lot right in that front six in that 3-3-5 scheme. Three, three receivers right, wide side of the field for Dalton. But he checks underneath. And a good tackle again in the open up field there to prevent more yards after the catch. That's Nick Tenoff. Stopping James after the catch is the four-year game. Very good protection and a very good decision by Andy Dalton, which you would expect with his experience. Soft coverage on the back end by the Aztecs. Dump it down to your check down back and let him get as much as he can. It's a third and six here. James vacates. Oh, Dalton made a great catch. Not there, though, and they're going to rule that an incomplete forward pass. All right, so that was a forward pass in the ruling of the officials, not a lateral. And thus, it was not a live ball. What San Diego State's coaching staff told us as we talked to him this week is that right now, TCU just doesn't give you many opportunities. They don't make many errors. They're opening up the door here today. You can see the bad snap low and to the right. Andy Dalton does a great job, but then he makes a bad pitch. Fortunate it was forward. So the ball was not live. Here's Evans, the kicker, 47 yards, and he missed. So a missed extra point, and now a missed 47 yard field goal, and San Diego State still leads by one. I mentioned I saw fans outside and vendors were saying, you want a program, and they were going, no, I want tickets. It's a <laughs> yeah. sellout today for the final game at this stadium in its current state. This is all coming down. Everything you saw there will be imploded in three weeks. And you can see Ronnie Hillman, we talked about him at the top, that he has to have a big day. San Diego State offensively thought that they could run downhill. Not many people have tried it against this TCU defense. It's not working well yet, but you got to continue with that game plan. I think that's your only hope against this defense. Walter Casey is in the backfield for the first time instead of Hillman. So split backs, and Casey gets the carry. And he got some yards before T.J. Johnson led the TCU surge. Now, TCU had one 49-yard pass, excuse me, San Diego State had a 49-yard pass play. Other than that one play, they have less than 30 yeah. yards of offense. Not a whole lot going on. And San Diego State talked about needing to get off to a fast start offensively. They've been a slow starting team this year. Well, that was a fast start, but they haven't followed it up with a whole lot. Did get six yards, though, on Casey's first down run. Screen set up, and Lindley just dumps it in the ground. That was going to be a tight end screen to the Gavin Escobar, the red shirt freshman, and that's what TCU's defense does so incredibly well, Ted. They read and they diagnose things. They recognize things via the formation and the personnel. They're extremely well coached. Tank Carter was putting some pressure on for TCU. It's now third and four. Yeah, still third and very manageable for Ryan Lindley and this offense. It's an offense that needs a first down. And a three-man bunch on the left side. No. Yes, on the Karaman. No on the first down. Pass Karam right into the hands of Alec Johnson, the left guard. That's a completed pass to the guard, Johnson. But Ibilawaya made sure that Johnson was going down to the ground short of a first down. Just trying to get first down yardage. DeMarco Sampson sitting down inside and 
A good job by Ibiloe sniffing out that route. And once again, what's the down and distance? What's the formation? The offense is trying to pick up a first down, and Ibiloe breaks very well on that route. The only first down for San Diego State so far in this game. The only first down was the 49-yard double reverse pass to Vincent Brown. Shorter punt. Curley's going to run up and fair catch it at the TCU 37-yard line. Down to the sidelines and Lindsay. Got San Diego State senior cornerback Jose Perez is out of the game on crutches with a huge brace on his right knee. It is a sprain. I am told he will not be back. Well, that's a, yeah. a huge development because Perez is by far their most consistent cover guy. And remember, the Aztecs really don't match up extremely well outside against TCU's offense. So Dalton back to work. He's 11 of 17 so far for 128 and two touchdowns. Tucker. And he got dragged down by Miles Burris, but not before Tucker ran it for seven yards. And last week, TCU in the first half of their game, Kelly, you talk about first downs, how important they are. They averaged eight yards of first down play, <laughs> even without the 93-yard yeah. touchdown pass to Boyce that was a first down. Yeah, that's extremely, extremely easy offensively. If you're being that successful on first down, the rest of it's just downhill. Second and three is Tucker. Tucker barrels over. As Texas, he runs it down close to the 40. I think a little change up right now in TCU's run game. They've decided to get physical up front and get downhill in a hurry. And you can see it right here. It's just a zone read, but the intention is to go inside to Tucker, who's a more physical inside runner than probably even Ed Wesley is. Tucker goes at 210 from Tyler, Texas. Your football fan, you know that town. And the great runner, Earl Campbell. And there's Tucker running it again on first down. You look at TCU, Kelly, and everybody wants to know, you know, how is TCU measure up against the other best. You look at the size, though, of that offensive yeah. line. It's yeah. pretty telling. Yeah, it's a, it's a real offensive line. There's no question about it. They're big and physical up front. And what they're doing right now is using that against the movement that the Aztecs like to do defensively on the line of scrimmage. Run right at a defensive line that is moving around. And only three defensive linemen, down linemen, as you see, spread very wide. Dalton going to throw that out. Nice move inside by Boyce. Josh Boyce inside the 20 with a first down, 18 yards. Landy Dalton is going to find out which guy has a great matchup and get him the ball quickly. Nothing fancy. Get it to a ball carrier or a receiver and let him carry it afterwards. Boyce is the really the outside receiver that has really emerged this year. The coaches describe him as a young man in a grown man's body, and you can see it on that play. Has a lot of skill. Another second year in the program, first year playing. And there's a burst in the middle for Wayman James, and he's inside the 10. But Ted, we were talking about this scheme that Rocky Long runs here, a 3-3-5. They do a lot of movement up front. Well, what you have to do with that as an offensive line is just try to get a hat on a hat and run right downhill. And that's what TCU is doing on this drive. Second down. They can get a first with a yard. Shotgun. Wayman James, the runner. James going outside. Step arms his way in. Wayman James gave it to Heisman. And he put it right on Larry Parker. Wayman James at 5'8". Over 200 pounds. He's like a bowling ball. He is explosive. He does have a burst, and you could see it on that play, getting through the line of scrimmage and bouncing to the left and had a great stiff arm to get in the end zone. He'll kick here. Evans has missed now five extra points this year, but that one perfect, and TCU has come back from 14 down. The zone running play up front, and 
James does a good job. Softness inside, pay dirt outside. Great job running the football. College football on Versus, presented by Windows 7, a terrific day. TCU number three in the country. We'll have Oregon number one coming up against Cal. 3D as well from Berkeley tonight. San Diego State now. With Brandon Davis back to the 21-yard line. 16-yard return. We look at our Toyota quality drive summary. I think TCU got back to kind of their identity. The quick passing game, Josh Boyce makes a miss and gets up field yards after the catch. And then James takes it up inside, bounces it outside. Remember, Ed Wesley is nicked up. And so they have to get something out of Tucker and James here today. Quick play, six, a quick drive rather, just six plays. San Diego State, Ronnie Hillman. Out for five. Well, San Diego State came out here today, and they kind of punched TCU right in the face in the first five minutes. And you know what? First time TCU's been punched this year. You're exactly and, right. And they they kind of got over that. They fought their way right back. I think 26 seniors, one of which is Andy Dalton, that you can't get more experience at the quarterback position. I think they've responded very well. San Diego State needs to get something going offensively right here. Ronnie Hillman has not been able to get much going, and there he runs into Brock and T.J. Johnson. So Hillman has had five carries and not much yardage, 17 yards total. San Diego State still with one first down. And this is more of what Al Borges, the offensive coordinator for San Diego State, told us. Downhill running game because... The five safety defense for TCU is so fast, it's hard to get lateral with them. Can San Diego State do that consistently today? Well, they need four here on third down. Stunt rush is picked up, pass incomplete for Vincent Brown. TCU leads the nation in everything defensively. Opponents just 23% third down conversions. That's a sick number. And San Diego State now is 0 for 5. And where San Diego State is having issues on third down when they have to throw the football. TCU is very good at understanding route reading personnel out of certain formations. And they just absolutely jump on routes, especially when those routes are ran to pick up a first down. So Stahovic gets his punt away. Curley has to drift back. And with a cover man right in his face calls for the fair catch. So after the shocking start by San Diego State, TCU is right at things, and they're up for the first time. Jake Kirkpatrick, the center, he anchors everything in the middle, and the interesting thing about this young man is he didn't play football until his high school senior season, but now he's the man up front, does a great job of setting everything in order with this TCU offense. And now the Horn Frogs get it on the ground, and big room for James. And slowly TCU's offense has just taken over this game. Andrews runs him out of bounds, flagged down at the end of the play. 28-yard gain for the moment. After the play, personal foul, defense, number 55, 15 yards, first down, TCU. And a 15 tack on, so a explosive play that shifts field position for TCU. And what TCU has done, we saw it on the last touchdown drive, Ted, when they just started to get physical up front. The running game is now going downhill, so what is the adjustment that San Diego State has to do? Rocky Long is going to have to get extra people in the box and then has to hold up in coverage outside. Dalton post. Oh, great play at the last second by Parker. Looked like a touchdown to Sky Dawson. Well, this is exactly what we were just talking about. The one-on-one -on -one upside. Parker running the skinny post. Or Sky uh, Dawson running yep. the skinny post on Parker. Does a nice job right at the very end and getting a hand on that football. But 
Once again, Andy Dalton finding the man-to-man coverage outside as San Diego State has to get more people down in the box to stop that running game. Run out of a more traditional set there, and they get that straight-ahead yardage again. Kelly, as you're talking about it, that offensive line is starting to establish itself. Tucker is the beneficiary. Nat Burry finally on the tackle for San Diego State. And the running game is getting physical. There's Kirkpatrick inside. He really sets the tone up front, getting physical, blocking back. Number 78, Josh Vernon pulling around and getting up in the hole. And isn't that what you're talking about? There's more San Diego, or TCU's outnumbering it. Absolutely. Inside, right? There's just more purple shirts than white shirts. Yeah, Vernon, the guard, pulls around and gets a, one more guy at the point of attack. Wayman James outside. Now here you're starting to see why this TCU offense, for all the talk about their defense and how great it has yeah. been, this offense has so many different ways to attack you. Yeah, and this offense, and that's the key right there, Ted, is they're so balanced. They can run the ball, they can pass the ball, and then you have the most experienced quarterback that you can get making typically very, very good decisions in both phases of the game. TCU has had over 500 yards in offense the last three weeks and five times in ten games. They're at 242 already today. And counting on the pass to Jimmy Young. That'll be inside the 10, short of a first. And basically what Andy Dalton is doing at the line of scrimmage, he has the leeway to basically run or pass based on how many defenders are in the box. If we're outnumbered in the box with six or more, we just throw it outside because we're better in coverage, just like he did on that play to Jimmy Young. Dalton now 13 of 20 today. 65%, that's just a shade underneath the season percentage. Tucker, nice cutback, but then San Diego State finishes. Tackle there by Barksdale. And no gain, so it'll be third and three coming up for TCU. Final three minutes of the half. Rocky Long has had a great start for his defense. Helped them jump out to a 14-point lead, but they're on their heels right now. Running back Tucker. Dalton throws. Touchdown, Curly! Another well-designed play. Nine-yard pass. Second touchdown to Curly. Against San Diego State in the red zone, especially deep in the red zone, you can anticipate man-to-man -man coverage. He gets one-on-one -on -one outside with Curley in the slot, and Curley just simply runs away from that type of coverage, regardless of who it is. Their red zone percentage has also been insane this year. They're about 80% touchdowns in the red zone, which is... Uh, and speaks volumes about this team. And after being down 14-0 in the first five minutes of the game, TCU has answered with four touchdowns with 258 yards of offense. And Andy Dalton can see the man-to-man -man coverage right here. Jeremy Curley's inside. This receiver is just going to simply clear out and give the floor to Curley inside. Throw it on time, throw an accurate pass. The result is a touchdown, Dalton to Curley. It really can't get much easier than that as, a, as an experienced Andy Dalton. If you can see the coverage that quickly, you know exactly where you're going. You can throw the ball in rhythm, on time, to a guy who you know in Curly that can make plays. Well, they came here today, we said to celebrate so many things, but most important thing, you got a feeling it was almost kind of an after party. Yeah. And, and for those who didn't go to Salt Lake City last week and the incredible win by TCU. And, and Gary Patterson was very, very cautious about that because of all of the emotion yeah. going into senior day, the thing about the stadium here today, and the emotional win last week. How was my team going to play? They didn't start well, but they're playing well now. And 
This will be Brandon Davis on the run back for San Diego State. Covered well by TCU. Stopped just about the 25 yard line with two minutes and change to play in the first half here in Fort Worth, Texas. Geo's backed it up this year. Gotta give him that. Having a great year in Cincinnati. First down, San Diego State. Lindley. Sack. And that's only the sixth sack that Lindley has had this year. Corey Grant. San Diego State hurrying up. Lindley throws the out. The pitch to Sampson. Is pushed out at the uh, 28. It's going to leave third and seven. Eight of nine there. And you can see again, San Diego State won first down today. This is a San Diego State team that threw for 3,000 yards last year, and Lindley's got a shot to throw for 3,000 again this year. And TCU just simply does not give you a lot of room. They kind of funnel you to third down, and then they're so good at yep. diagnosing what your intention is on third down, they snuff out the play. And San Diego State 0 for 5 on thirds, and their thirds have been manageable, like this one. Lindley cranks up, and a pass incomplete again on the cover there. It was Tank Carter. Those two linebackers, Carter and Brock, can cover, can't Unbelievable. they? Unbelievable, absolutely. Two high safeties and then the coverage underneath. Once again, the route recognition. Carter doing a great job of understanding that Sampson was going to try to cross his face and gets, simply gets a hand on the ball. And Curley this time is down at the 40-yard line, but TCU has a minute 19 and two timeouts. So they've got time if they choose to want to go for another score. San Diego State, 27 yards in their last seven possessions. Two touchdown catches already for Jeremy Curley and a big punt return. A 45-yarder that set up a TCU score. Empty backfield for Dalton. And up the sideline and out of bounds goes Jimmy Young. First down across midfield. That was quite a throw, and I don't think a lot of people understand that Andy Dalton does have some arm strength, kind of throws the fade in between the rolled-up corner and the safety before he could get there off the hash. Stays in the same setup. That's the one that shows you throwing from the left hash all the way across to the right sideline. It was not accurate. It went off Curley's hand. The other thing that just shocks you, Kelly, when you watch, I mean, how many snaps under center has Dalton taken this year? Right? Red no, zone, probably yeah. goal line snaps yeah, about it. Absolutely. I think that's probably the only time. And you're absolutely right. There are a lot of quarterbacks playing the game at a high level like Andy Dalton that don't get under the center hardly at all. Still a minute six. Plenty of time here for TCU. Wayman James in on Dalton's left. Stays in the block. Curley. Oh, and a nice play there because Curley had a chance to go if that tackle was not finished. And it was Nat Burry again. Timeout here by TCU. So they got one left. Yeah, good use of the timeout. And Curley had some running room if he could have kept his feet that time. But. What San Diego State is trying to do is give help over the top. All of their coverages typically come out of what's called a two shell, two high safeties. Sometimes they stay high or sometimes they go into man to man and Rocky Long likes a lot of man to man coverage. They pressure out of that. Andy Dalton has to do a good job of recognizing the safeties, keeping your eye on them and then picking out the one on one matchup. You really have to mention as we haven't yet mentioned about San Diego State is you know, we're all focused on TCU and where they're going to play their last game. But San Diego State's going to a bowl game yeah. for the first time in a long time. It's probably going to be in San Diego. The expectation is they'll end up in the poinsettia bowl. Yeah, and Brady for Brady Hope to do that in two years after inheriting a 10-loss team. Yeah, and he talked about it's great we're going to a bowl game, but we're here to win the conference. Mm -hmm. So let's not jump ahead. Well, that's, that's the goal, which 
TCU could put an end to today. Post Johnson. All the way down near the 10 yard line goes Bart Johnson. 29 yards. TCU once again going inside. Bart Johnson really running by a linebacker right there. Catch him trying to get his hands on him, but zone coverage, the inside receiver gets to the void in the middle of that zone, and Andy Dalton finds Bart Johnson. That guy's, you can see he's a money guy. Four catches in the first half for Bart Johnson. In the flat, Curley down to the four. TCU is going to use its last time out. Darren Lewis on the stop. Timeout. TCU, the second charge timeout this half. 30 seconds. No, Ted, you talked about that rhythm. Well, this is a rhythm play, kind of the bubble screen. You can see Bart Johnson blocking out in front. The crazy feet, the misdirection by Jeremy Curley, and he does a lot of good things once he has the ball in his hands. Referee made a mistake there. That was the final timeout for TCU. Yeah, it was. And good use of it. Remember what happened last time TCU was down deep in the red zone. They get man-to-man -man coverage from the San Diego State defense. Andy Dalton is not opposed to throwing the ball down here on the plus Correction. five, four-yard line. TCU is out of timeouts to go to hold second half. Yeah, the official heard you there, Chad. All right, so Gary Patterson, uh, who is a – as. You've seen multiple times this year, Kelly, and we learned that talking yesterday. You know, he is hands-on defense. And they've got an offense that's in pretty good hands. Uh, no question. Jared Anderson and also Justin Fuente do a good job of kind of co-opting that, the run and pass game. Very balanced, and when you have a playmaker like Jeremy Curley, he's the guy they target. They build touches for him, and then the offense expands from there. This is where they are. I mentioned they're over 80 percent now counting their success today over 80 percent touchdown scoring not point scoring but yeah. touchdown scoring in the red zone yeah the red zone percentage what you need to look to is how many touchdowns they score that's the that's the stat that you want to see and add another one they make it look easy don't they three times to curling in the first half Well, if they needed the alarm clock to go off, it rang loudly. Yeah, it might have, been a, might have been a little late, but you're absolutely right. Jeremy Curley going to the corner, getting somewhat of a natural pick from Josh Boyce outside, coming inside, and Curley does a nice job of running his route off the outside receiver. 34 first half points in a row after San Diego State. Stunned the TCU with a 14-point opening salvo. Watch the outside receiver is going to come inside, and Curley is right here. He's basically going to rub off of that outside receiver and then run kind of a reverse fade from the inside. You can see right there, does a nice job of just creating some room and then going to the corner. And it just it just must drive an opposing coach nuts. How because. You can't cover the man, right? They're too good. You really can't. You can't and cover the man, but how do you defend some otherwise? Yeah, you can't You can't do it man-to-man. -man. What you really have to do, I think, in the red zone against Jeremy Curley is you have to play almost man across or, excuse me, a zone across the board, kind of the picket fence type of thing, and you have to understand that their go-to guy is in the slot. He's not an outside guy. He's in the slot, and that's very, very difficult for a defense to do. So 24 seconds left in the half. Kevin Sharples, he's the kickoff specialist for TCU. Davis stopped shy of the 20-yard line with a flag at 17 seconds here in the half. And don't forget our halftime show coming up. Presented by Geico. Get you caught up on all the scores. The Auburn-Georgia game. Penn State. Trying to stun Ohio State and Columbus with a lead at the half. And get you set up for Good Oregon and Cal. Illegal block in the back. Return team. Number six. Half the distance of the goal. 
First down, San Diego State. See, Ted, I, I think on special teams, I think that's where an area that's really underrated in terms of evaluating this TCU team. I think where their depth and their talent really shows up is in that phase of the game, yeah. and you can see it here. San Diego State has constantly been behind in terms of field position because of the play of TCU's special teams. That's a great point. It really shines in, in when you get to a top-10 team like TCU, and you see it, and Brady Hoke's team uh, has Lindley take a knee here, and they'll regroup. And TCU, 34 unanswered points. Let's listen in. Now, you need to understand something. Coach Williamson, we went down with a heart attack. He don't leave anything on the field today. We didn't start. I told you what was going to happen, and you didn't start like you needed to, but you finished. You finished the next 30 minutes and be a champion. You understand me? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Let's go, All right, so now we know one thing. Gary Patterson needs... Some hot tea yeah, exactly. with Spike with some honey and a couple of lozenges at the half. Yeah. Otherwise, he's not going to finish. His throw won't finish those and last really, 30 minutes. really before the game yeah. even starts. But what he was talking about there is what he's talked about us during the week. All right, let's hear again. We go back down to Lindsay. Robin's a warm coach for heart attack. <laughs> uh, coach. Yes. That's the longest that you have trailed so far this year. How'd you get back in this game so dramatically? Well, well, you know, we, we, the fans, the kids, everybody's stunned like, you know, San Diego State wasn't going to show up to play, and they did. And we got to get ready to play. You know, I told them that, you know, we uh, lost our offensive line coach to a heart attack, so we had to change some things up and some adjustments, how we got people moved around. But outside of that, once we got things right, then uh, everything's been good. You lost your offensive line coach? Yeah, he's in stable position, in uh, condition in the hospital, but he, we had to get him off the field. So, uh, you know, things are good. we gotta, we got to go win a championship for him. When did that happen? Uh, in the first quarter, right at the beginning of it. All right, Coach. <laughs> Dramatic news hey. for your team to handle. Welcome to college football. Good luck in the second half. Halftime here in Fort Worth. TCU down 14 nothing back to take the lead. Kelly, as the half went along, it appeared to be San Diego State's biggest fear. They just could not function against the TCU defense. Yeah, once TCU kind of caught their breath, you're absolutely right. No running game to speak of. Can't convert on third down. Those things aren't going to go well with you if you're playing this TCU defense. TCU ran 50 plays of offense in the first half. <laughs> if they do that again, Rocky Long's going to need some volunteers to play 100 snaps on defense but they just had a wonderful halftime here where they've honored great players throughout the history of tcu football including the two remaining living members of their 1938 national championship team that was quarterbacked by davy o'brien a legendary college football name and san diego state will get the ball first to begin the second half we also did not get any more details other than confirming the news that Gary Patterson said leaving the field that uh, wow. Eddie Williamson assistant head coach offensive line coach for TCU uh, is stable in a nearby hospital that's what we are told Let's kick to uh, Davis of San Diego State from the goal line oh hammer. Tanner Brock again And Davis hasn't gotten up. We talked about TCU's special teams being special, and Tanner Brock right there getting off the block. And listen to this. You know, that's, a. I think, one of the worst fears for a kick returner is when you're running full speed and a guy that you don't see initially all of a sudden shows up from behind the block and he's right in your face before you can do anything about it. And everything now quiets. Uh, seeing that, unfortunately, we've seen too often in recent weeks around football. Brandon Davis, a junior from Oakland, California, Castlemont High School. Gary Patterson, you see there, he's over to see if uh, he can find out. A 
Again, it looks like there was a little contact underneath the face mask there. That yeah, they're targeting that helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact, and I don't yeah. know if that qualifies right there or not, but some of the most violent collisions you see in this game, uh, a game that's all based on violent collisions, happens on the kickoff. Well, that's exactly right. That's, would you say from your experience playing, the most treacherous part of the game? No question about it. You have guys running full speed, getting off blocks, and then appearing before your eyes and returners that are running headlong right into them. So the good news, the thing you always look for in these uh, sobering moments is what you're seeing, limb movement from Brandon Davis, and now <laughs> sitting up. And that's what gets everybody here collectively to exhale and applaud. And Davis walks off. And so after that unsettling start to the half, now San Diego State tries to generate offense. One first down, just 85 yards in the first half. Ryan Lindley throws it low and incomplete. Pressure there from Colin Jones. There are the uh, numbers for the first half from Windows 7. And San Diego State, the bottom line is they just got nothing going. One first down, couldn't run the football 17 yards. And, and after a while, TCU, Andy Dalton, and that offense got it rolling and came back from a miserable start if you're Gary Patterson, but he liked what he saw in the end. I want you to talk about this quarterback here when we get a shot here. Look at where Lindley has to get down to get this snap, Kelly. He's a big guy, six foot four. As a handoff goes to Hillman, and he's stopped. T.J. Johnson leading the uh, leading the defensive surge for TCU. You talk to Iosefa. Iosefa is that center that's only 5'11". They list him at six foot, but this is the power play. You're going to see the guard pulling. You're going to see the outside block right there. This is the identity of this new running game and the toughness. But right now, there is just no running room because of the fit, and you can see number three, T.J. Johnson, the extra run defender down in the hole. That's how you have to defend the power play. It was never blocked. Third and ten, shotgun, four rushers spread very wide for TCU. Daniels picked up by the running back, and then underneath, it's Sampson, and he's covered and dropped by Colin Jones. So the completed pass for just a short gain and San Diego State once again will punt. And once again, TCU dictating to San Diego State when they have to throw the football, not when they want to. And third and long, and Colin Jones does a nice job dropping into a two-deep zone, reacting out of it and getting Sampson to the ground before he can convert. A bit of busy punting day for San Diego State and Jeremy Curley. And he got another shot to return with some blockers. But then he runs into Aaron Brewer, the long snapper that got down the field to cover the kick for San Diego State. Still good field position, just shy of the 50. 78 passing yards in the second half as uh, Tucker slants off the left side and gets it down to the San Diego State 45. 78 passing yards in the second half. Andy Dalton will get to 10,000 wow. passing yards in his TCU career. Yeah, he's uh, fairly efficient, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Incredible. And he does it week after week. He doesn't have many down moments, especially now his senior season. He's basically seen it all, and he just simply does not make many errors. Quick hit to Curley. And Curley spins his way down to the 35 and a first down on the tackle by Darren Lewis. That is the eighth reception already today for Jeremy Curley. Three for touchdowns. And that's a classic way of how you can design touches for your playmaker. And that's what TCU likes to do offensively for Jeremy Curley. They get him going early in the game and they'll get him going early in this second half. The bubble screen 
your fellow wide receivers blocking for you. Get your playmaker the ball in space and see what he can do with it. Fullback shivers in the game. Two backs, two tight ends. Unusual alignment here for TCU. Dalton's going to run. Bumps into Shivers and then gets a couple of yards. You get so used to seeing spread fields, then they come at you with a two-back, two-tight end set. That's really going to disrupt you on the defensive side. Well, and actually, Dalton wanted to go to Boyce outside, matched up one-on-one, -on -one, but Boyce fell down coming off the line of scrimmage. And so Andy Dalton made a good decision by just getting what he could and getting upfield. They got a couple. Second down eight for TCU. Matthew Tucker continues with the running back. Brief appearances by Ed Wesley in the first quarter, and that's it. Tucker outside. Tucker into the secondary. Down to the third level tacklers to the 21-yard line. 13 more in a first down. We saw TCU start to do this in the second quarter when they really got rolling. They, they just got more physical up front, and you can see the guys. Marcus Cannon, it starts with him at 6'6", 350, and we actually think he's a little bit, a couple biscuits <laughs> more than 350, but yeah. it's starting to get physical right out here yeah. on the edge behind that young man. Coach Patterson said to us, 360. Nice play there, nice hit. 21-yard line for no gain by Matt Burry. Matt Burry's a freshman that is playing a lot today for San Diego State in that secondary. Yeah, one of those extra safeties that a lot of times becomes a box player, and that's what San Diego State has to do, play the game, get enough in the box to stop the running game, but don't get too many in the box where you're exposed outside and the playmaking ability that TCU has at their wide receiver position. Remember San Diego State today missing B.J. Williams and linebacker Marcus Yarbrough, two starters that both are out with injury. Dalton keeps, Dalton gets a couple. So already challenging enough to play this TCU team, and then you lose two more frontline guys, and there's Rob Andrews, a sophomore that stepped into Yarbrough's spot. Well, this is where San Diego State has to find a way to get off the field. It's been their nemesis, at least in the first half. You have to find Jeremy Curley number 85, typically in a slot, and find some way to cover the guy. Typically, and Boise State had a, a good game plan in the Fiesta Bowl last year. They bracketed Curley down in the slot and made the other guys beat him right here. We'll see if San Diego State does something like that here in the second half. Curley slot right. That's who Dalton's looking for. But goes up top there in the end zone and overthrows him. So Curley was the target coming out of the right slot, but an incompletion, and uh, TCU will send out the field goal team. And a good job in coverage of doing exactly what I was talking about. Curley is right here, and he's going to get doubled by this guy and a safety over the top. You can see the up defender forces him inside to the safety. That's what bracket coverage looks like. San Diego State was successful on that play. And Evans missed a 47-yarder in the first half and this one he drills through from 37. so three more tacked on by ross evans of tcu and the horn frog offense continues to shine a seven play drive that culminates in a field goal and now a 37 14 lead Devon Brown back, but San Diego State, this will be a Sam, Dominique Sandifer. Dominic Sandifer, a receiver that uh, runs that kick back after the injury to Brandon Davis. Let's go down to Lindsay Soto. Guys, Andy Dalton is on the cover of Sports Illustrated right now. The last Horn Frog to have that honor is Sonny Gibbs right here from 1962. Another quarterback here with his favorite target, Buddy Isles, who teamed up with him to beat the top-ranked Texas Longhorns in 1961. They're here to commemorate the last game in this stadium. Are you sad at all to see it go down? No, because it's hard to run those stairs when you cut class. <laughs> Nah, it's, it's got a lot of tradition here, but it's antiquated, so they need to bring it down and build a new. What is your favorite memory about playing here? Uh, actually, 
playing all the number one and number two teams in the nation, beating them and tying them. You're telling me it used to be a more of a wind tunnel. Yeah, it, it used to, it blows the predominant wind is south, southeast and northwest. And one time I kicked the ball, I punted for it, and the ball dang near blew it back over my head. So yeah, it does blow. What do you think about Interception by Greg McCoy. You have to play action passing game and Lindley rolls to his right and just doesn't make a very good decision right there. McCoy has great coverage on Samson, the deep receiver running the over route. You just simply cannot throw that football covered from the beginning. McCoy does a good job of sneaking underneath Samson right at the very end. And the Lindley just simply has to make a better decision in that situation. And so TCU right back to work. Wayman James, and he's inside the 45. And after the, and, and Kelly, this has just got to be such an emotional wrenching time for a team like San Diego State to give yourself such hope, right, early on. And now to be unable to generate anything at all against the TCU defense. Absolutely. And Brady Hope knew coming in that they a lot of things had to go right in order for San Diego State to, to finish their mission here today. It went extremely right early in the game, but TCU isn't number three in the country for nothing. And they were going to come back. They have 26 the seniors, and you saw paid, that. But after the, after the play was started, so we're going to have second down. And you just knew that TCU is in this position because of their experience and their talent, and they were going to come back in some form. All right, so it'll be second down and three here for TCU. At the San Diego State 44. And Dalton keeps, and Dalton is going to be brought down, it appears, just shy of a first. Already TCU running up on 60 plays already, Kelly, and we're still midway through the third. Well, they're getting a lot of opportunities because San Diego State simply cannot convert on third down and possess the football for any good at all. And Andy Dalton doing a nice job today, just taking what the defense gives them finding his matchups, and he's done that early and often in this game. Tight end slides, another handoff, and Wayman James barrels his way down for another first down. This is what TCU did in the second half last week, Kelly. Once they had the lead, they were just able to run, run it right at Utah. Yeah, the physical run game, give it to James, and just listen to this at the end. And that's 5'8", 203 pounds, kind of a bowling ball. He actually is very explosive as well, and you can see it on that play. Well, he stiff-armed a defensive back on his way into the end zone in a first-half touchdown run. And here on this give. All the way down inside the 15 for Matthew Tucker. So with Wesley missing most of the game, the two-headed backs are... Tucker and James when they're both having a big day 18 more here and what you usually get out of Wesley now they're getting out of Tucker on this play and we saw James the play before kind of combine their skill sets and it equals one Ed Wesley that's 91 yards now on the ground for Matthew Tucker and 70 for Wayman James and you can hear the pads pop and TCU started that in the second quarter get that big offensive line just getting a hat on a hat and get these big running backs getting downhill in a hurry. Time out here, TCU. And on the other side, 16 yards rushing for Ronnie Hillman, San Diego State's 1,000 yard first year runner. It's a TCU taking the time out here. Seven minutes even, third quarter. TCU on its way to an 11-0 record. All right, Kevin, well, of course, uh, the TCU fans are hoping that somebody can knock off either Auburn or Oregon and allow TCU to, 
to get a shot to play for it all if they can finish 12 and 0. And the fade's broken up nicely. McFadden breaking that up for San Diego State, intended for Josh Boyce. Curly inside that time. Remember, we've already seen a touchdown pass fade from the inside, and this is just a simple fade. Boyce matched up one on one outside. McFadden doing a nice job of not only staying in the receiver's hip pocket, but finding the football at the end of that play and making a nice play on the ball. Quick to the line here, and TCU doing a good job of handing that ball off quickly to Tucker, and he is down inside the 10. And of course, the other part that is well, I guess we all have our personal opinions on how yeah, tasteful let's, this let's part of yours. college football is, but we're in the beauty pageant segment. And, uh, you know, it's, it's reality, and everybody knows it, even if it's unpleasant to talk about. How about Wisconsin today? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're a, talking about a one-loss <laughs> well, team trying to points? barrel their way in. 83 yeah. points today? Unbelievable. Third down. They can get a first at the three. The bunch is left, so they throw the slant right to the ISO receiver. But again, McFadden just stands up nicely for San Diego State. What TCU does is they go three by one, three receivers to the left, and Boyce is ISO to the right. The quick slant, outside move, and come underneath. And that ball got through to him. He probably just need to catch it. But what a three by one set does is it defines it quickly for Andy Dalton. They had everything they wanted, they just didn't complete the play. And so a rare stop here in the red zone. And Evans, who's one for two in field goals today. And that one is no good. He's now wow. one for three. He's not kicked a long one this year, so the 47-yard miss was not necessarily so distressing. That one will be a little more bothersome to uh, the TCU side. And he might want to avoid uh, Gary Patterson when he runs off to the sideline, too. And again, you, you don't like to think about it, but points uh, points can play some tricks with some people's minds this time of year well you talked about the uh, beauty pageant well, you know if you have TCU got up to a slow start but they played very well since then you have Auburn head to head tied up with a five and five team San Diego State's a seven and two team but I guarantee in the voters eyes a seven and two San Diego State doesn't compare to a five and five Georgia right which is a shame. And there's a uh, handoff inside and just a handful of yards for Hillman for San Diego State. And the thing I, I love about this whole drama as it plays out, Gary Patterson and Chris Peterson, the Boise State coach, are friends. Gary Patterson spent one year coaching at UC Davis early in his coaching career. And the quarterback that year of the UC Davis team was Chris Peterson. And they it's, were, yeah. They were texting each other back and forth when we were meeting yesterday. 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 And uh, and what was interesting, <laughs> out of the shotgun, is the handoff to Hillman. And Hillman gets outside and is spun out of bounds, still short of a first down. Chris Peterson, our uh, 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 Gary Patterson wished Chris Peterson luck last night for Boise State's game. Chris said, thanks. Uh, I appreciate that, and have a good massage tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Gary Patterson said, what great. is he talking that about? Was great. I don't get massages. Maybe he does, but I don't. <laughs> Peterson's an offensive coach. They might get massages. The defensive coach well, and Gary Patterson, they don't I, do stuff like that. I think we'll talk to uh, Commissioner Craig Thompson in a minute about that, because, of course, they're going to play each other next year when Boise becomes a member of the Mountain West. Third down and two. Still just one first down today for San Diego State. And boy, they almost had one there on a pass to Dylan Denso. But it was broken up nicely by Jason Teague. And so remarkably, on their second play from scrimmage of the game, San Diego State hit a big pass, and it's still their only first down of the day. Once again, great coverage. And even though Teague does not see the ball, once the receiver reaches up for the ball, Teague does a great job of punching the ball out late. Exactly the way you should play that. The eighth San Diego State punt of the day. And Curley did not fair catch it, and Josh Wade drops him right there. So it's all TCU right now. We'll visit with Mountain West Commissioner Craig Thompson when college football on Versus continues.
some years it'll be uh, every team in the Mountain West Conference has played in a bowl game in the last 12 years and so it's very exciting they have a, a great program going Brady Hoke has done a phenomenal job in, in resurrecting San Diego State football. All right, TCU with it Wayman James as they continue this two man uh, two headed running back attack. Commissioner Thompson, how do you sort things out? You see Auburn in a dogfight with Georgia, and you see TCU got off to a slow start. But we're talking about style points. How do you and the commissioner's office have to regulate all that and make sure your guys are being seen in the right light? I think what you do, Kelly, is tell the story. You know, statistically, there's no better defense in the country than TCU uh, this year, and arguably for the last two or three years. They're in the top ten offensively in the nation. Uh, they just put up 37 unanswered points. And I, I think, uh, what did you say, one or two first downs for San Diego State. So they're solid on both sides of the football. You know, Craig, obviously the question that no one knows the answer to yet is will TCU, if they can take care of their business, get a chance to play as an undefeated team for the championship. But just give us a sense from your viewpoint, the Mountain West's position, of how the Mountain West has played against the so-called power schools and the power teams. Well, they've done very well. We're 18 and eight, the best bowl win percentage over the last six years and, and arguably have played these people, uh, these people being automatic qualifiers in BCS conferences very well in bowl games as well as the regular season. Four here, hit there to Boyce. And Larry Parker on the cover for San Diego State. And how much of all of that information do you think makes a difference? And that's a tough one, but I know does it. That's a tough one because you start getting into the uh, comparatives. You know, mm -hmm. we were talking a moment ago about Auburn and, and the Georgia game. Uh, Georgia lost to Colorado, mm -hmm. who's lost, uh, won, I think, right. two or three games this year and, and changed football coaches. So, you know, you can play that game all day long. And, you know, the people, all that you can say about TCU is they've lost three games in three years. They have one of the best defenses over that same time frame. And, uh, you know, I I'm very excited about the Boise State coming into the league next year. You mentioned that earlier. They, uh, I've been to both bowl games the last two years. Each of them won TCU in the Poinciata and Boise State last year in the Fiesta. Uh, very excited. That's going to be a phenomenal matchup for this league. Well, I think a lot of people, and I'm one included, I think the best national championship game this year might actually be, be between TCU and, and Boise State. When will they get a chance to play next year? How do you, you just throw them right into Utah slot, or how do you do that? Yeah, that's exactly what we did. So next year, Boise State will play at TCU, uh, replacing Utah in the lineup, and, and probably that that game will be earmarked uh, somewhere in the, uh, late November. So that actually means TCU gets the home game against Boise State because Utah was slated to come here, right? That's correct. Interesting. Uh, Craig, I mean, we'll look ahead in a second, but let me just ask you for the immediate future for Gary Patterson. What would you sense would be, could it possibly be that a one loss team could play for the national championship ahead of a, a potentially undefeated TCU team? Well, we've been very outspoken about the system, and that's our issue is simply it's, it's, a, it's an opinion-based system. You have two of the three rankings are, are opinions of uh, writers and Harris Poll people as well as coaches. And, you know, if you, if you don't pay attention and track this religiously, and again, it's a, it's a very subjective process for those people. And, uh, you know, I, I think that that's uh, the issue we've had throughout the system. All right, one more for you, Craig. Uh, going ahead, I know there's a process by which conferences are evaluated to try to gain entry as an automatic qualifier to the BCS. What's the potential for the Mountain West and for their fans, the fans of these schools, to think it could get better? Got to be in the top six in the top 25 ranking and the top six in the computer ranking, and we're very close. Uh, clearly have done it in the top 25. We had three top 25 teams each of the last two years, have two this year. And, uh, you know, the computer system, we have to count on everybody in the league to to perform at a level that would get us in the top six. All right, well, there we go. San Diego State with a first down on a pass to DeMarco Sampson. And that evaluation process, is that next year, when four years? We are in the third year of third a four-year year cycle. Okay. Great. Well, I know it's going to be a, an interesting time for you. Probably having a lot of conversations. We have, this. you know, and, and we're going to work at TCU because of the scheduling has a bye next week, and then they close uh, at New Mexico in the last game, and then several conferences will play a December 5th championship. So uh, we have our work cut out to stay in front of the, the national media, uh, telling them the TCU story. Well, Lindley's got Brown out there. Hits him in stride. Second time with a flag down at the end of the tackle. And Lindley finally gets a big play to Vincent Brown. 
And San Diego State will have first and goal. 50 yards on the pass. And while they untangle this, Craig, thanks so much. It's great seeing you. We'll look forward to seeing you uh, in bowl season. Yeah, it's great to be with you, Ted Kelly, and, and thanks for all the work that Versus does to, uh, to promote and uh, show the conference nationally. Versus.com today, by the way. We've got these brand-new uh, Versus Vision panoramic highlights of, of today's game that'll be in high depth, or if you have a 3D laptop, let's listen in. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number seven, half the distance to go, first down, San Diego State. Very similar play with San Diego State, this time just dropping back, kind of the double move and trying to get Vincent Brown over the top, singled up on the safety, Greg McCoy. Good job of play design by San Diego State. All right, the Aztecs in the goal line set. It's Ronnie Hillman, and he stopped short. Tanner Brock finished to make sure that Hillman did not get in. You can see right at the very end with McCoy coming up, trying to get a hold of Brown. The hand goes up high. The face mask trying to get him to the ground. But the damage was well done by them. Is he trying to strip the ball there? That it looked like trying it. to do. Yeah, and McCoy was successful with that last week. He punched the ball. Actually, it was Teague that punched the ball out against Utah, but... Certainly the TCU tries to strip that ball and the receiver gets it in their possession. DeMarco Sampson now vacates Sullivan the lone back and there's a good push by the San Diego State offensive line and an easy touchdown. Brandon Sullivan's second of the day. And the first time for the Aztec fans to cheer in a while. Wow. The second big pass play they've hit to Vincent Brown that set this up. And this is just closing it out with Sullivan taking it up inside. They list him as a fullback, but essentially he's just the backup running back, running back skills from that fullback position. And Abel Perez kicks through the point, so San Diego State has a length of field drive, 75 yards. But a chunk of it on the 50-yard pass to Vincent Brown. All right, just a minute and a second to play here in the third quarter. That touchdown break and a run of 37 straight TCU points. Strong-legged Perez, but this will be fielded in play and run back. This is Sky Dawson, the track star. 100 meters sprinters, top level speed, and he gets it out near the 35-yard line. Well, we've got number three on the field here. We've got number one Oregon coming up on versus. And let's check in in Berkeley right now with Lewis Johnson. <laughs> Wait a second, Kelly. Lewis, our old buddy in 3D? Yeah. I'm not I, sure I'm ready for that. I'm yet. trying to picture that. <laughs> uh, although the Ducks uniforms, let's face it, the Ducks uniforms in 3D, that could be pretty good. How stacks up defensively. What you have to be defensively against Oregon is very fast and very experienced, and I'm not sure Cal cuts it. Dalton throws. Dawson catches. Drops short of a first down, and that'll end... The third quarter in Fort Worth. Third and five. Curley is not on the field right now for TCU. Wayman James is the back. Bart Johnson slot right. He's been a big possession receiver. Going to run an option pitch. And James has cut down San Diego State. Boy, Leon McFadden has had a very nice game on he, the corner. He really has in that corner that was in press coverage already does a nice job in this speed option to the corner then the pigeon right there shows up Leon McFadden off that corner doing a nice job once again San Diego State quietly got off the field. They give they got to give the Aztecs defense credit that was the 70th play of the game by wow. TCU and so you start wondering are they going to get worn down are they getting run out when they come close to that punt by Kelton Fair catch by Parker of San Diego State, and the Aztecs get it right back. And here's San Diego State on first down. Lindley with all day. And the cross is tipped, intercepted, T.J. Johnson. And there's a devastating turnover off the hands of Sampson. Sampson runs a nice route. You can see number one right there in the middle of the field going all the way across. He's open. The ball is just simply yep. behind him. You had Johnson over the top, number three, that gets the deflection. But if that ball was thrown 
accurately. That's a great conversion. And so the turnover gives it right back to TCU and not just the turnover, but the good run back by TJ Johnson from the 12 yard line. Tucker outside and McFadden was out there again to force Tucker to try to cut back once and he goes down at the five. If you're trying to make hay against this TCU team as a whole, you obviously cannot turn the ball over. Your defense, San Diego State's defense, got off the field, gave the offense the ball back, and I like the play call throwing on first down. I just didn't like the throw by Lindley. So now TCU on second down at the five, has the eye set in with two tight ends. And they run easily out of that for the score, but there is a flag down. Flag down from the left flank as Tucker ran it in. Cody, offense, number 77, 10-yard penalty, replay second down. Spencer Thompson, the left guard gets called. The left guard actually wasn't figured too prominently into this play. He rotates with number five, Dooley. You can see him right here is actually the player that's going to get called for the hold. The play is going to go to the opposite side. You can see the lead fullback. It's a design cutback because of where the fullback goes. And it's hard to tell. I mean, there's holding inside on the line of scrimmage about every play. So that takes six off for TCU. They're back to the 14 yard line on second down. They can't get a first at the two. Back of the end zone too far. Jimmy Young running the route. It'll be third down. And TCU has done this a few times. They they hurry to the line of scrimmage. They go bunch formation, snap it quickly, trying to catch San Diego State, disguising that 3-3-5 defense and where the pressure is going to come from. TCU hasn't handled that part of their offense very well. Dalton's thrown four touchdowns today. No picks. Third down here, the kickers had an uneven day, so adding points here uh, may not be a sure thing for a field goal. Fade route, Boyce, and that's going to be out of the end zone. So that same play where they go opposite all the strength, and Boyce goes down hard. They had the bunch right there and threw it to Boyce, who was ISOed on the left. And you're right, the, you have the quads to the left and the single receiver to the right, and Dalton didn't think Ooh. the safety could get there in yeah. time, but that was incredibly that's, ugly. Oh, that's uh, The fade out of bounds, and it would have been out of bounds anyway, but man alive, that could have ended very, very poorly was, for Josh Boyce. Thankfully, thankfully for that padding and uh, in the redesign of things here, surely that, will, uh, that little tight area gets fixed up. All right, Evans has missed two. This will be 31 yards. And that one, he drills through. So TCU does tack on three, which makes it, once again, a three-score game. And he hasn't been in there. You would assume that something is, is wrong with him because he hasn't been on the field in critical situations. One of those seniors, but he's already made his mark today. Three touchdown catches. Sandifer fumbling that kick and will pay a price. A steep price. And the Dursell difference. Fork on the cover for TCU. Me, Ted, the difference between winning and losing are plays like that. San Diego State gets the ball back, and Lindley throws a bad pass, gets batted up in the air, and TCU intercepts it. And then the kickoff. They miss. They mishandle the kickoff, and now all of a sudden, your offense once again is starting up, starting the with their backs to the end zone. That's not the way you beat good teams like TCU. Well, TCU's defense excelling in so many areas. They've held Ryan Lindley today to seven completions and 21 tries. Two have been for big yardage to Vincent Brown. Ronnie Hillman has 
not found much room to work. He won't get much there. It's his 11th carry for Ronnie Hillman. It'll be a total of 30 yards, and Ronnie Hillman has been, a, of all things, a second-half runner. He's second in the country to LaMichael James of Oregon in second-half rushing yards, which is a pretty prominent statistic. Yeah, because he's not a big back. He's 5'10", 185 pounds and somewhat slight, good speed to the outside, good vision, but you wouldn't think of him as a real durable guy gaining speed in the second half. Second and nine, pressure, and then Lindley just dumps it away as he had uh, Colin Jones running at him. So Lindley just got rid of the ball, and there was not a receiver. In my view, there was not a receiver. There was a defender in the area, but not a receiver. Well, the officials are talking about right. it right now, and I, yeah, yeah, there you go. I think that's, uh, on my view, that's the proper call. And the question is, where was he when he threw that ball? That's the next question. Intentional grounding, offense, number 14, loss of down, third down. And off the play action it? pass, you can see the quick pressure by Colin Jones. Just barely in the field yeah. of play. And the reason that you're asking that question is obviously if it's intentional grounding in the end zone, it's a safety. He was very, very close. The mark is at the four yard line. He actually threw the ball from the one yard line, but they gave him the four. Third down. Unblocked man coming, throw back across. And Sullivan made some, made some nice yardage out of that. He gets to the 15. It's still short, but 11 yards, which gives uh, the Aztecs some space if they choose to punt. They're all looking at Brady Hoke to see what he's going to say on fourth and five. Yeah, and read his lips, punt the football, and that was a pretty good play right there. Sullivan does a nice job of, I thought he was going to end up putting his knee on the ground when he received it, but then a good job getting upfield. They list him as a fullback, but really Sullivan is the backup running back. He has more of a running back yes. type of skill set than he does a fullback skill set. All right, punt nine for San Diego State, and it is not Curley that's back to uh, field it. It's Curtis Clay, and Curtis Clay getting his chance. He may go, no, stumbled at the 30-yard line. And again, the punter was there. Second time Stahovic has tried to, uh, has basically saved a return for six. Well, with Curley obviously being down in some form, Curtis Clay is Mr. Dependable as a wide receiver and a sure-handed return guy. But when the guys up front are blocking like they are, the success on special teams kind of breeds success. The guys blocking for the return guys on the punt like this or on a kickoff, when you experience the success, they work extra hard. Tucker, the running back for TCU. And Tucker slashing his way down close to the 20-yard line as TCU closes in on their 11th win. One more would give them what they hope, again, would be a shot at a BCS championship game. Here's Gary Patterson. Well, you know, it's uh, obviously all of us start the season wanting to win and play for a national championship. I think every coach in the country does that. Uh, but I'm realistic, and I understand that uh, we've got to win. And then it's kind of like Chris Peterson and I talked about it. Uh, I wish him luck. He wished me luck. And... Uh, just control our own teams and, and try to win all of our games and then just see what happens. Outside is James. That's a first down run. Boise State took care of their game last night. Boise State has three games left. TCU just won. We'll have it again from Albuquerque two weeks from today on Versus. In Auburn there, you, they get by Georgia and then they have to potentially, well, if they win today, they have the SEC title game as well which would pretty much, much eliminate a one-loss LSU because if you don't get to your own championship game, you're not going to get to the national championship game. I think Gary Patterson's TCU team is set up very, very well. James is dragged down from behind. Larry Gibbs on the play. Of course, Oregon still has to play at Oregon State, a team that TCU beat early this year when... Oregon State was healthy when both Rodgers were playing. Well, Oregon still has an Arizona team that 
was playing well yeah. early in the right. year. They've been kind of banged up, but for whatever reason, that's a matchup that Arizona likes. They have played some very, very good, close games, high-scoring games, but close nonetheless with Oregon. Second down here for TCU, winding down toward nine minutes to go in the home finale. That's a pick. Well, Dalton misfires his first interception of the game. Gabe Lemon on the pick for San Diego State. So TCU has had some chances to, to, quite frankly, to pile up points here in the second half, and they've not taken advantage. And this was intended for Bart Johnson setting outside. There wasn't a lot of pressure inside, but actually it was Curtis Clay coming from the outside, working underneath the inside receiver, and a little miscommunication. Andy Dalton, I think, thought Curtis Clay was going to hit the afterburners a little bit quicker. So Ryan Lindley back to work for San Diego State. Hillman gets the carry. Hillman bouncing. Hillman get outside. First time he can do this all day. And there's a little bit of a, a look at what so many others have seen. This is a kid that ran for 226 at Missouri this year. And that's the special characteristic that you see in Ronnie Hillman is watch when he gets to the edge when it looks like there's a little bit of room right there there aren't a lot of guys in the country that have that kind of a burst to actually make the corner and make that a positive play only 30 yards all day before that carry that was good for 21 Jones pressures Jones sacks Lindley flag down Both teams had had only five sacks all year. Two on the TCU in the first quarter today. Illegal formation on the offense. Five men in the backfield. Penalty decline. Second down. One of them uh, resulting in a touchdown for the Aztecs, and now two sacks by TCU on Lindley in the second half. And one of the few times that TCU is actually getting pressure, the play-action passing game is tip typically well protected, but 28 calling. Jones coming off the edge. That's one of those extra safeties. And Colin Jones' speed adds a new dimension. He wasn't the starter early in the season, but because of an injury, he's the starter now, and his speed shows up on the field. Screen set up to Sullivan. Oh, he split the defense nicely. Sullivan with a big gain, and the BOA has to run him out of bounds, but all the way down inside the 40-yard line of TCU. The third big pass play of the day. This one, a screen, goes for 42. And Sullivan is the screen back. Hillman doesn't catch many passes. Sullivan does a good job of getting up behind his offensive lineman. His offensive line does a great job of sorting things out at the point of attack, and then Sullivan gets up behind that. So San Diego State showed some spark here in the fourth quarter. Deep ball, Lindley. Brown there. Batted away by Jason Teague. Jason Teague, a, a big cover corner. Big body, 6'2", almost 200 pounds, one-on-one -on -one with a big receiver. And if this ball is just to the back of the end zone, you can see it's really underthrown there. Brown had a step on Teague, and Lindley just needed to lay it out there a few more yards. San Diego State has now thrown for more yards than any team against TCU this year. Just shy of 200. Hillman brought down by Tanner Brock. The, it's somewhat deceiving in that the bulk of the passing yards now have been on three plays. Yeah. Two deep balls to Vincent Brown and a screen to Sullivan. Yeah, if San Diego State could have gotten something going offensively between those big yes. plays, they would be doing something right now, but they just simply haven't been near consistent enough. And certainly here it's four down time for San Diego State. So two plays here, they need seven yards. Lindley throws on the run. Nice throw. Touchdown, Vincent Brown. Well, that's Lindley's best throw of the day. 33 yards on the move. 
and San Diego State scores again. San Diego State sets this up well. They have tripped receivers to the right. Lindley's getting protection, going to roll that way and just drop coverage. You can see Eboy Eboy just simply doesn't do a good job of reading the direction where your quarterback's going. You don't have to worry about the backside. All right, Brady Hoke's team, they uh, did not choose to go for two there, which might have uh, been a play. They kicked the extra point, and they're within 12. All right, TCU's anticipating onside here. So they're playing up. They've got nine men up, two men back, uh, hanging around the 15. And Perez kicks it off deep. Sky Dawson. Again, the sprinter speed, but it's probably coming back. Flag thrown, which has all the look of a bad block. Sky Dawson, a 10 200 meter. Doing the return. Illegal block in the back. Return team. Number 29. Half distance to the goal. First down, TCU. All right, that'll pin TCU back deep and without a couple of their top threats, Lindsey Soto. It'd be hard to see it. I think the lower right right there was probably it. I didn't. A lot of times they call the guy at the point of attack. You have to understand when the ball is in your area, you can't do anything questionable just like that. All right. Here's Dalton with a give, and Tucker gets outside and gets about three yards. So TCU playing right now, though, without a couple as well, Lindsey was uh, has found out for us down there. Both Jeremy Curley and Josh Boyce right now are out. Yeah, and it's it's one wide receiver is one of the deepest positions for TCU offensively. They have. They still have Curtis Clay and Bart Johnson, Jimmy Young, Hicks as well. And so they have a lot of depth there anyway. And running it out close to the first down there is uh, is Tucker. So it's going to be a third down and short. It's going to be a pretty big play here coming up for TCU. Five forty to play. Well, you talked about whether San Diego State should have gone for two that last possession. They're down by 12. Oh, that's, yeah, that's. You can see Boyce right there with the ice pack on his knee. So a third down play that TCU needs. All right, San Diego State there. It's been an interesting fourth quarter, hasn't it? That TCU has not been able to put this game away as Ernie Lawson makes the play. This has not been like. The second half of last week's game when Utah just really TCU just smothered. Them. Yeah, and I think that's where you see the improvement of San Diego State is I think in games like this in the past, they've found a way to just get blown out when it wasn't going well. San Diego State. Brady Hope trying to save some half. time. He uses a timeout to save about 30 seconds of clock. But I go back, yeah. Kelly, every team has the car. We all know that if you follow football. Interesting because the difference between a 13 point and 12 point deficit is insignificant. 13 to 11 yeah. is significant. That's why I was a little caught off guard that the Aztecs did not go for two. Yeah, you could get going for two. You could get into that, you know, a touchdown two point conversion. And then all of a sudden it's a, it's a touchdown that could get you back in that game and tie it up. All right, Kevin. Well, the big question of the last 24 hours, would Newton play? Has he ever? And Auburn looks like they're going to survive Georgia today. And that'll get them set for the Iron Bowl as against Alabama. This is Parker back for San Diego State. And Parker with a run back. Breaking. Parker still going. And San Diego State remarkably has some significant life here in the final five minutes. A 30-yard punt return by Larry Parker. And that's putting a delay on the party here. After the big punt return by Larry Parker. Lindley going for the home run ball. He's got a man. Touchdown. Vincent Brown again. Silencer.
Vincent Brown isolated up top on Jason Teague, and Lindley went right at him. They went right for the home run, Kelly. And San Diego State doing a great job going three wide receivers to one side, creating the matchup that you want on the other side. Vincent Brown on Jason Teague. Wow. A five-point game, still 450 to play. What San Diego State has went three by one. You can see the three receivers down here creates the one-on-one -on -one here. All Lindley has to do is make sure that this safety doesn't go interfere with coverage outside. With the safety that far over the ball, I know exactly what I have outside. If I throw the right ball and my receiver gets off the line of scrimmage, good things are gonna happen, and it did for San Diego State. This has been something. San Diego State was averaging 15.5, as you see in Lindley's numbers, 15.5 yards of completion coming into the game, which led the country. Lindley's completed 11 passes tonight for 262. Wow. That's 20, 20, almost 25 yards of completion. San Diego State knew coming in that they had to get yards in big chunks, but I don't know that they yeah. anticipated that. And a TCU defense that not, had not allowed anybody to throw for 200 yards against them this wow. year. 262 for San Diego State. And the other side of the ball for San Diego State is Rocky Long's defense has found a way to get Andy Dalton and that TCU offense off the field and give the San Diego State offense the ball back once again. Again, TCU guarding against an onside, but now no need. With this much time remaining, the ball kicked deep. This is Sky Dawson. Sky Dawson. And there's that speed. The unmistakable speed that gets him out to the 45-yard line before Logan Ketchum drops a 44-yard return. And once again, TCU gaining an advantage, having a big play on their special teams. They do this consistently throughout the entire year and if it isn't Curley tonight it's been Sky Dawson doing a tremendous job on that return. And now what you have that you can't help but think on the TCU side you've had a missed extra point in this game a missed short field goal a red zone interception earlier in this quarter by Dalton a lot of chances where they really could have put this game away. Well and if you have your experienced quarterback you have to be willing to throw the ball in this situation as well. Wayman James hammers it and hammers it to midfield and gains five. And as we go down to Lindsey Soto. Guys, Andy Dalton knows that they need something out of this offense right now. He spent the last defensive series walking up and down the sideline trying to fire up his troops. His troops, though, are depleted. As you mentioned, Jeremy Curley out. He's tightening up. Josh Boyce, his wide receiver, ran into the wall in the end zone pretty hard. He has ice on his right knee. He's not back in. And keep an eye on tight end Logan Rock. He's also in a lot of pain. Something going on with his right shoulder. And without Curley in there, it's been Bart Johnson that, that the veteran quarterback in Dalton has liked. Second and five, James. And he's tripped up just short of a first down by Rob Andrews. I have a feeling what Gary Patterson may be thinking here. I think I can run the clock. Absolutely. I think I can run the clock and force, at the very least, force San Diego State to use those two timeouts. Hey, you're the number three team in the country. You have aspirations of getting to a BCS, maybe even a national championship game. Your offensive line has to win for you in situations like this. Especially number 61, Marcus Cannon right there. Get in behind that big boy and let him get it done. They need about a foot here on third down. They're still in the shotgun. They're going to inside give it, and James got the first down. So now that forces Brady Hoke because the clock will stop for a moment, but then it will start again, and Brady Hoke has to start thinking about his timeouts. Pizza Hut's favorite matchup. And we see Matthew Tucker with, tonight with Ed Wesley out, doing a great job, over six yards a pop, and then Hillman, really didn't get anything going in the first half, but he's found some a little bit of daylight here in the second half to give that offense a little bit of a spark. Brady Hoke sitting on his timeouts right now as it's under three minutes. Matthew Tucker. And Tucker got hit by Long. He slowed up and he got uh, maybe a half a yard. Tucker's run for 117, James for 91. 
Dalton's thrown for 240. I mean, TCU has 443 yards of offense and 40 points, but they're unexpectedly in a five-point game here. Yeah, when the, your defense is giving up big plays, allowing the opposition really to stay in it, that's been the name of the game because San Diego State certainly hasn't done anything consistently well on the offensive side of the ball either. Tucker the single back. And that's big. That will be a first down for TCU under two minutes. Matthew Tucker, 11 more first down, and now that will absolutely force Brady Hope to use timeouts, and uh, really San Diego State now is gonna need something. They need to make something happen. Yeah, you, you, when you get under two minutes and the clock's running now well under two minutes, you have to burn those timeouts. Probably after this play, you're gonna have to burn both of those timeouts and try to get off the field and get the ball back. Dalton and TCU running the play clock down to the limit, snapping it at two. Tucker brought down at the 30-yard line, and there's Brady Hilk using one of the two remaining timeouts. And Jeremy Curley out Time now, but those three touchdown catches tonight and making him our K Jewelers go-to guy. And the injury of the tightness Hasn't allowed him to be the go-to guy here lately, but this was the mismatch that Andy Dalton liked really in about the first three quarters of this game. And San Diego State simply didn't have any answers with Curley coming from that inside receiver position and just getting one big play after another. But when they needed him here down the stretch, he hasn't been able to get back on the field. Of course, they'll have a week. TCU is off. They have not had an off week yet this year. They'll be off this coming week and then finish their season two weeks from today in Albuquerque against New Mexico. You'll see that game on versus. And of course, that's wiped out now. That's no longer relevant after the 35 points that San Diego State has put up here on the board. And James drives it and he is within a yard of ending the game. And San Diego State has used its last timeout. Timeout, San Diego State. The third and final charge timeout the second half. And so it comes down to one play, one yard. If TCU gets a first down on this play, the game will, will be over. Right now, TCU trying to finish here, and they do. And that will do it. Wayman James with the first down carry and now barring a complete catastrophic mistake, TCU will have the ability to run the clock out. Now you have to start thinking about the style points that we talked about. Yes. TCU had their hands full here in the end and Auburn obviously had their hands full against Georgia. How does that sort out on the BCS stage? Kind of like the beauty, or like the, the, uh, the talent portion part of the beauty pageant didn't go so well. TCU yeah. had mastered the first parts tonight. It didn't go all that well for Auburn either, but that's typically the non-AQ schools like TCU get penal oh, no penalized question. at Much a higher more. degree. Much more benefit of a doubt. That's the one knee, and it looks like that'll be the only one, I believe, that TCU has to take. Play clock and game clock are in sync, so. The other thing, Ted, is it really did not help TCU for Utah to go down and get handled by Notre nice. Dame like they did. That's, that's uh, the reality of the day. But the flip side is that TCU is taking care of his business. They're going to take one more snap here just to be sure. That TCU will win its 24th consecutive regular season game. And they will be one game away from a second consecutive undefeated regular season. That's all you can do. Now give credit, though, to San Diego State. They will play in a bowl game this year, and after being smothered by the TCU defense for most of three quarters, Brady Hoke's team played one terrific fourth quarter. A lot oh, of absolutely, credit. and the thing that order number one was to instill toughness into the San Diego State program, and that's what you saw in the fourth quarter. That toughness was coming out at a time when they had every opportunity in the world to just lay down and quit. 
Andy Dalton's 40th career win as a quarterback at TCU. That's some number. As TCU sends off 26 seniors and their stadium today in a finale with a win. So number three is one on versus. Now it's time to watch number one Oregon as they get set for battle against the Cal Bears. For Lindsey Soto and Kelly Stoffer, I'm Ted Robinson. Thanks for joining us in Fort Worth as college football continues on versus. Coach, you said all week you thought this game was going to be tough. Is this what you had in mind? Well, not along with our offensive line, Coach Curley went down, Boyce went down, and we ended up defensively blew, blew three coverages. So uh, when you do that, those kind of things are going to happen to you. Also lost an offensive line coach early in the game. Can you give us an update on his condition? Well, right now I think he's stable. I, they put a catheter in, and he's doing good, and uh, we're all thinking about him, but I think he's okay right now. The doctors did a great job. Are you concerned at all about the fact that this was a close game and how that might affect you in terms of the polls? Oh, yeah, but I can't worry about it. I won 40, 35, and 11, and 0. So, uh, you know, we want new and it was. We had some problems with some things. We had some players out, and uh, we found a way to win. That's what we wanted to do. What were the problems? Well, number one, we, we didn't have a lot of players. We lost Curley. We lost Boyce. We lost an offensive line coach. And defensively, we were down four players. So uh, you got to do it, and the guys that back up got to do it. That's how you win championships. So uh, there is no excuses. we got to go play. Congratulations on the W. Thanks. Guys. Andy, your BCS hopes are still alive, but you had to fight for this one. What did San Diego State do against you guys that so many other teams have failed to do? You know, they came out and played really hard in the second half, and, uh, you know, it showed with the play. You know, we, uh, you know, we're, weren't playing like we did in the first half, and, uh, you know, it hurt us a little bit, but, uh, you know, we got the win. You lost a lot of your weapons in this one, sort of had to improvise. How did that affect things offensively? Uh, I mean, I think we weren't uh, calling as much as we were in the first half, but, uh, you know, They'll be ready to go in two weeks. We hear the fireworks overhead. That, of course, for this being the last game in this stadium on December 5th when this thing goes down. I think a lot of people are going to cheer just because people like explosions. What are you going to feel as you watch this thing go down? It's crazy. I'll have all the memories that I've had here and, uh, you know, with all the players and everything, it's just going to be emotional. But, uh, you know, the new stadium's going to be pretty sweet. Thanks a lot, Andy. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. Right, let's go. Guys. Let's go. Let's go.